Hi everyone, my name is Tyson, and welcome to Retro Hellspawn Reviews, my new show I'm doing on this channel that will more than likely be the focus of the channel. Now, let's get to the topic at hand, Brutal Doom. What the fuck is Brutal Doom? I hear you cry. Well, Brutal Doom is a mod of the original Doom, using the many source ports such as GZ, Doom, and Zandronum that cranks the excitement of Doom up to 12 on a 10 point scale of badness. How? Well... That's how. There have been so many additions and minor changes to the game that combined really make a major change to the game that was starting to show its age to many gamers. To me, however, it's probably the best aging FPS of its era. Sure, its control scheme was very difficult to deal with, sure the whole not really aiming thing got annoying, and sure the key mechanic got annoying to some, but overall it's a wonderful game. Let's discuss the many changes that Sgt. Mark IV made to this incredible game that really gave it new life. First and foremost, what really changes things up, mouse aiming. To be more precise, the source ports allow mouse aiming, the mod just takes advantage of that by making it so instead of the enemies having a single large hitbox that does the same amount of damage no matter where you hit, each hitbox denotes not only how much damage you'll do, but how you'll possibly detach limbs, explode their head, tear them down with a minigun, whatever. This changes things tremendously, because not only do you do more damage, but you can go through the game getting headshots and everything, sufficiently lowering how much ammo you use. However, to compensate for making killing enemies much easier, Sergeant Mark IV added a few things to make killing them more difficult. For instance, they do much more damage, they're smarter, they can actually roll out of the way of your shots, and sometimes if you shoot off their leg, they'll pull out a pistol and shoot you all on the ground. Not to mention, they don't always die when an explosion goes off near them. Sometimes it just knocks them off their feet. Being that in Vanilla Doom, the only way an enemy falls is when they're dead, this will throw off veterans of the game a lot. Next, let's talk about weapon changes. The pistol has been removed unless you choose to use the mutator that brings it back with an updated skin, and has been replaced with an assault rifle. This is a very good thing because the gun you start off with now isn't completely useless and can be actually used in situations where, say, the shotgun wouldn't be, or the minigun wouldn't be. This is great because now you aren't left with a completely useless gun after you get the minigun like it was in the original, actually encouraging old school tactics that would be used in games like Quake or Duke Nukem 3D. On top of this, the shotgun spread has been changed to where it's not quite as useful from a distance, though it is surprisingly accurate from across the damn map. The super shotgun has been changed, and for the better. It still looks relatively identical, only now you can shoot one barrel at a time, leaving room for the player to think tactically. I also noticed that it's a much closer range weapon than the regular shotgun, as it has a much larger spread, which also gives the shotgun meaning where it would normally be rendered useless by obtaining the super shotgun. The minigun has been changed substantially. You can just use primary fire, which is relatively accurate with some recoil that does a lot of damage in a short period of time to a large number of enemies. However, now there's an option to where if you press the secondary fire to warm up the minigun, getting the barrels rotating, you get an insane amount of knockback and you can literally watch enemies get torn apart. If you tear them down all the way with it, you get a brutality bonus. Next up we have the plasma rifle. Like Vanilla Doom, it's a more powerful alternative to the minigun, however there have been some nice little tweaks. First, when you kill an enemy with it, they burn alive, and it's wonderful to watch. Second, if you hold down the secondary fire, you actually use it as a flamethrower, which is nice, but very short-ranged. I haven't noticed anything about the rocket launcher other than it does more damage. The BFG has been changed, but only slightly. The charging looks a lot more cool, the ball it shoots is a lot nicer looking, and the explosion is way larger. Last but not least for existing weapons, there's the SMG that's in the secret Wolfenstein level of Doom 2. It got a graphical improvement and allows for aiming down the sights. Not much else has changed except for maybe a higher firing rate. I honestly wouldn't know, I didn't play Doom 2 that much as a kid. 
Not only are there changes to already existing weapons, Sergeant Mark IV even added new weapons like the Mancubus Fireball Launcher and the Revenant's Missile Launcher. I can only assume you have to take a chainsaw to the corpse to obtain these special weapons. There's also a variation of the BFG that I don't know if it's a secret or if it's available via cheat only, but I put it in Give All and got the BFG 10,000 which is basically a fully automatic BFG, though you'll have to be damn careful because you could easily get yourself killed with that one. If you don't want all the weapons, just type Give BFG 10,000 while cheats are active. Another gun that he put in the game is the Railgun from Quake 3, which to my knowledge is only available via cheats. Just type Give Railgun in the console and you'll get it. It uses the same ammo as the plasma gun in the BFG, and might I say, it's damn fun to use. By the way, don't worry about copying the cheats from the video, I'll include them in the description. Next on the list. It's a minor change, but they added the ability to aim down the sights for guns that don't have a secondary fire, which to my knowledge only includes the rifle, the shotgun, the aforementioned SMG, the railgun scope, and that's it. This is mainly a change to add a slight zoom when aiming at enemies from a distance, but unlike modern shooters, your accuracy doesn't go down when you're firing from the hip, and I'm incredibly grateful that Sergeant Mark IV didn't do that. Next I'm going to talk about graphics. Some things are added by the engine, some are added by the mod taking advantage of the engine. The engine allows for dynamic lighting, and the mod adds a glow that makes all light sources not only dynamic, but destructible. A small touch, but a nice one. On top of that, the engine allows for anti-stropic filtering up to trilinear, HQX4 filtering, V-Sync, and so many damn options that you can make the game just right for you. Please note that in order to get the best performance with the filtering and other quality options on, that you need a computer that's at least somewhere between lower to mid end PC, closer to mid. Also note that that's based on my experiences with my last and current computer, so if it's not entirely accurate then I'm sorry. You can turn down the settings to work on your computer. I had a way low end computer that had at least 7 year old hardware and it still ran ok with around 30 fps when everything was configured properly and there wasn't too much action like a bunch of lights or explosions. I couldn't record with fraps, but hey, it ran. Next thing, what the fans of the mod have been waiting for me to talk about. The rip and tear mode. Yes, when you get the Demon Strength or Berserk mode, you go into Rip and Tear mode, which gives you the ability to do fatalities, which I actually found out while looking up a cheat that the Rip and Tear mode, every difficulty after Ultra Violence, Doom Guy's dialogue, as well as the whole mod were inspired by the 90s Doom comp that I didn't even know existed until then. Which then prompted me to read the hilariously horrible yet awesome thing and do some rewrites to make some more relevant jokes. I'll link that in the description below. Or maybe I shouldn't. I don't want to give anyone brain damage for re from reading this horrible thing. Anyway, as I said, the rip and tear mode is where you do fatalities featuring the player, well, ripping and tearing the enemies apart, and damn is it fun. Be warned though, if you get too close for too long, the enemies will just as easily rip you in half and eat you whole or just beat your brains out. Literally. I think the most difficult enemy to try and do a fatality on if they're at full health is the Kako Demon. Every time I try to just solely beat the crap out of them, they eat me alive. A feature that in my personal opinion is kind of gimmicky but nonetheless cool are the allied AI that you can find across the map, so long as you're playing with the original maps. There are green marines tied to pikes, and as far as I can tell, the only way to untie them is by kicking them. They're cool because they're actually pretty damn helpful and can do all the work for you if you're low on health, or if you just want to watch the carnage. A small yet surprisingly satisfying feature that I briefly mentioned earlier is the brutality bonus. When an enemy is left helpless, say with a limb blown off, leaving them crying in pain on the ground, you have a chance to get a brutality bonus by kicking their head into a splash of brains and skull. There are several other ways of getting brutality bonuses, for instance shooting a caco demon bit by bit until they're a pile of mush, shooting every limb off a zombie sergeant, the list goes on for a while. What makes this so satisfying is that what a brutality bonus does is it rewards the player 5 health. I don't know if it's still in the mod. But in the older versions, like version 16 or 18, you might sometimes get armor instead of health. Anyway, this is incredibly satisfying and encourages the player to take full advantage of the truly brutal nature of the mod. And this small detail that may have gone unnoticed by players might actually be my favorite addition to the mod. The last feature I'm going to talk about is the general melee system. Most FPS games that include a melee system are good games, but the melee is mainly a last resort kind of thing where you only have one attack and it either kills an enemy, stuns the enemy, or just hurts them. Which in succession could kill them, but is generally a very risky way to go about things. Take Halo for instance. You only have one melee attack. In front it does a set amount of damage, in back it kills everything except for hunters. In this game, it's actually pretty goddamn fun. You can do a bunch of different combos like left left right, left left kick, or left right left, and so on. 
The left punch is a light punch. The right is a heavy punch that you can actually keep held down to basically do a wind up. The kick is like the Duke Nukem kick unless you're using it in a combo or doing an aerial kick which basically makes it like a kung fu kick. Similar to the whole fatality thing, sometimes when you attack an enemy from behind with a punch, it'll snap their neck. In the previous versions, it was a constant that you'd always do it from behind as long as the enemy wasn't too powerful. In this version, it's a bit inconsistent. This could be seen as a shitty thing to some gamers, but I see it as a great thing because it's realistic. Not every time you go to kill someone from behind will you get the drop on them. Sure, it's a bit annoying, but you get used to just trying to beat the crap out of them if you're behind them. Sometimes you just snap their necks, sometimes you beat them to a pulp. That's another thing I love about the melee system. Just like the rest of the game, it's absolutely brutal. Honestly, if I don't have a minigun or ammo for it, I'll just go fisticuffs if I'm taking on a pinky, even on black metal difficulty, which is my most played difficulty, but that's only for the first episode of Doom 1. Anything past that and I need to tone it down a couple levels. The only reason for that is that as a kid, I never actually beat the full game. I only beat the first two-ish episodes of Doom 1, and sometimes I just messed around with Doom 2. Honestly, I know the first episode so well that I could run through it without even trying because I used to play that particular episode religiously, even doing speedruns before I knew what speedruns were. Anyway, that's enough off-topic rambling, on to the soundtrack. There's an optional soundtrack that's featured in the download section of the mod on the ModDB page, and it's just damn cool. It's a full-on metal remake of the soundtracks, including Doom 1 and 2. By the way, did I mention that the mod is fully compatible with all official Doom 1? It's very compatible with a lot of other mods as well. Hell, just go check out a couple of my other videos on my channel, like my Brutal Visor PlayStation Doom video I made as a joke video in anticipation for the now released Brutal Doom version 19. I'm done with my shameless plug now. Despite all the great things that Brutal Doom has to offer, there are a few things that are a bit problematic and sometimes infuriating about the mod. First of all, there's a bug that I found that makes it so that every so often when I do a jump kick, sometimes just a regular kick, I explode and die for no apparent reason and I don't even get a death cam, it just does old school doom death where it just drops the camera. There's another bug I noticed, but it's not really that annoying, it's actually kind of funny. It's just the bug that kept the fatality animation looping between the Baron of Hell and the Imp. I let it go for a minute or two until I didn't want this taking up several gigs on my hard drive. Here's a 15 second lapse of the rest. Honestly, aside from this, I couldn't find anything that was really annoying about the mod that wasn't because of my lack of skill or something I couldn't figure out after a few minutes of experimenting. Anyway, I don't think I nearly covered everything in this mod, but honestly, that would probably double, maybe even triple the length of this video, and I don't think anyone wants to sit and hear, listen to my voice for 20 minutes talking about each and every feature of this damn mod, including my nonsensical rambling that goes on for days. Anyway, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and possibly consider subscribing. I'll be making a lot more reviews as that's what I want the main focus of my channel to be. Occasionally I'll make a Source Filmmaker video or something and I'll probably make a few more shows to fully encapsulate what I want to do with this channel. Anyway guys, until next time, this is Retro Hellspawn signing off.